All right, greetings and salutations, everybody. Um, I'm here today. I wanted to show you guys uh, a tractor mod that I did to my Kubota BX23S. So, if anybody has a tractor or is thinking about getting one, if you have a tractor, you'll know that these front headlights, if you have a bucket, are close to useless. They come in handy here and there, so I won't say they're completely useless, but there's a lot to be desired. So a lot of people add headlight, or, uh, sorry, overhead lights on their ROPS bar. So that's exactly what I did on here. So I'm gonna go over how on the BX, specifically on the BX23S, I was able to tap into the 12 volts uh, supply um, and kind of go from there. But for right now, I wanted to show you the hookup here and the hookup being, um, as you can see, hopefully here, uh, I have some U-bolts on the top that are wrapped in electrical tape kind of for grip. Uh, I angled them just because I couldn't find the exact uh, width I needed, so that kind of worked out because then I added a little more spacing in the back, so I wasn't going to be upset, too much upset with it. Um, and then I, it, with the lights kit that I bought, it included this bracket, so if you're getting a light kit, make sure you check what type of bracket you're getting, uh, and then sort of figure out what you got to do, because the one thing, piece I had to make was this rod here. So it's just a piece of steel that I drilled two holes in at the sizing I wanted um, to, to be able to accommodate this. If I was going to do it again, I would have pushed the bracket out a little further because this got in the way of, uh, of mounting it, which was kind of annoying. But as you can see, it's on there pretty good, on there nice and solid. Uh, I tied up the cabling best I could, and some people I saw would do plugs, actually. For the electrical connections but I went ahead and just soldered them to the lights instead and because I really don't plan on taking it off or really maintaining this I'm really having to maintain it and if I do I'll just resolder it's really not that difficult uh, but then of course when you do that make sure you put heat tubing across your connections I actually double heat shrunk it and then of course wrap it the best you can if you have even a bigger heat shrink do that as well but Biggest thing, if you're going to do these types of mods, if you're going to do any electrical mod with tractors, make <laughs> damn sure you tie up your loose cables. Even that might be a little too loose. I might want to put another uh, zip tie here. I might do that. Uh, because you don't want... Branches are still going to come through. They might catch this. So when you're driving around with these types of mods, be careful that you don't catch things. Because I do hit top branches when I drive around, so now I'm going to have to be a little more careful. I added a little slack here just so I could still drop the ROPS. Don't really plan on ever doing that, but it's there just in case. So, how'd I tap into the power? Um, that was the fun part here. Uh, hopefully you can see that pretty well, but I have the cable come down here, tied in. Um, and as you can see, it's just two wires up here that deliver power. You can see that get in there a little better delivers power to it so this is just sending it 12 volts from a 10 amp circuit and the 10 amp circuit I used was if you have the tractor you know what this used to be but uh, what this what this used to be was a 12 volt car adapter plug direct tapped off the battery this according to the Kubota, man, Kubota manual says that it is 10 amp uh, it's, it's a has a breaker on it or not a breaker but a fuse at 10 amps so I just went ahead and found the cabling that went from here underneath the tractor and it plugged into this plug right here so what I did was I followed this cable don't know how well we're gonna be able to see under there ah, here you can see pretty good. so I followed this cable this again here we followed this cable which feeds the uh, which feeds the 12 volt adapter plug from there I cut the plug that went to the adapter to the 12 volt adapter soldered in two wires ran it through the switch and then sent the 12 volts that was switched out through the second cable as you can see here that is then quick connected through the same hole 
that is used for to feed the uh, tail lights, tail lights and turn signals. Uh, so that is how I got 12 volts to it, and it just so happened that the kit I bought uh, that had the, the wiring kit that came with came with a switch that fit perfectly inside the socket. So all I had to do is get a screwdriver and pry out the socket. There's two little friction pins on the side. Pry that out. I drilled a big hole in the bottom of it and just ran the cable out through it, made sure that it was watertight and all that. And uh, now I have a nice little switch on here. So now I just open this up when I want my overhead lights on and press the little button. So it works out way better than, and now you have, it's, I'll show you an end example or I may have already showed you one. with that. 